A company screens job applicants for illegal drug use at a certain stage in their hiring process. The specific test they use has a false positive rate of 2% and a false negative rate of 1%. Suppose that 5% of all their applicants are actually using illegal drugs and we randomly select an applicant. Given the applicant tests positive, what is the probability that they are actually on drugs? So let's work through this together. So first, let's just make sure we understand what they're telling us. So there is this drug test for the job applicants, and then the test has a false positive rate of 2%. What does that mean? That means that in 2% of the cases, when it should have read negative, that the person didn't do the drugs, it actually read positive. It is a false positive. It should have read negative, but it read positive. Another way to think about it, if someone did not do drugs and you take this test, there's a 2% chance saying that you did do the illegal drugs. They also say that there is a false negative rate of 1%. What does that mean? That means that 1% of the time, if someone did actually take the illegal drugs, it'll say that they didn't. It is falsely giving a negative result when it should have given a positive one. And then they say that 5% of all their applicants are actually using illegal drugs. So there's several ways that we can think about it. One of the easiest ways to conceptualize is just, let's just make up a large number of applicants. And I'll use a number where it's fairly straightforward to do the mathematics. So let's say that we start off with 10,000 applicants. And so I will both talk in absolute numbers, and I just made this number up. It could have been 1,000, it could have been 100,000, but I like this number because it's easy to do the math. It's better than saying 9,785. And so this is also going to be 100% of the applicants. Now they give us some crucial information here. They tell us that 5% of all their applicants are actually using illegal drugs. So we can immediately break this 10,000 group into the ones that are doing the drugs and the ones that are not. So 5% are actually on the drugs, 95% are not on the drugs. So what's 5% of 10,000? So that would be 500. So 500 on drugs, on drugs. And so once again, this is 5% of our original population. And then how many are not on drugs? Well, 9,500 not, not on drugs. And once again, this is 95% of our group of applicants. So now let's administer the test. So what is going to happen when we administer the test to the people who are on drugs? Well, the test ideally would give a positive result. It would say positive for all of them, but we know that it's not a perfect test. It's going to give negative for some of them. It will falsely give a negative result for some of them. And we know that because it has a false negative rate of 1%. And so of these 500, 99% is going to get the correct result in that they're going to test positive. So what is 99% of 500? Well, let's see, that would be 495. 495 are going to test positive. I will just use a positive right over there. And then we're going to have five, 1%, 1%, which is five, are going to test negative. They are going to falsely test negative. This is the false negative rate. And so if we say what percent of our original applicant pool is on drugs and tests positive? Well, 495 over 10,000, this is 4.95%. What percent is of the original applicant pool that is on drugs but tests negative for drugs? It's, the test says that, hey, they're not taking drugs. Well, this is going to be five out of 10,000, which is 0.05%. Another way that you can get these percentages, if you take 5% and multiply by 1%, you're going to get 0.05%, five hundredths of a percent. 
If you take 5% and multiply by 99%, you're going to get 4.95%. Now let's keep going. Now let's go to the folks who aren't taking the drugs. And this is where the false positive rate is going to come into effect. So we have a false positive rate of 2%. So 2% are going to test positive. What's 2%? of 9,500, it's 190, would test positive even though they're not on drugs. This is the false positive rate. So they are testing positive. And then the other 98% will correctly come out negative. And so the other 98%, so 9,500 minus 190, that's going to be 9,310 will correctly test negative. Now what percent of the original applicant pool is this? Well, 190 is 1.9%. And we could calculate it by 190 over 10,000. Or you could just say 2% of 95% is 1.9%. Once again, multiply the path along the tree. What percent is 9,310? Well, that is going to be 93 0.10%. You could say this is 9,310 over 10,000, or you can multiply by the path on our probability tree here. 95% times 98% gets us to 93.10%. But now I think we are ready to answer the question. Given that the applicant tests positive, what is the probability that they are actually on drugs? So let's look at the first part. Given the applicant tests positive, so which applicants actually tested positive? You have these 495 here tested positive, correctly tested positive. And then you have these 190 right over here incorrectly tested positive, but they did test positive. So how many tested positive? Well, we have 495 plus 190 tested positive. That's the total number that tested positive. And then, which of them were actually on the drugs? Well, of the ones that tested positive, 495 were actually on the drugs. We have 495 divided by 495 plus 190 is equal to 0.7. 226, so we could say approximately 72%. Approximately 72%. Now this is really interesting. Given the applicant test positive, what is the probability that they are actually on drugs? When you look at these false positive and false negative rates, they seem quite low. But now when we actually did the calculation, the probability that someone's actually on drugs is it's high, but it's not that high. It's not like if someone were to test positive that you say, oh, they are definitely taking the drugs. And you could also get to this result just by using the percentages. For example, you could think in terms of what percentage of the original applicants end up testing positive. Well, that's 4.95% plus 1.9%. 4 4.95, we'll just do it in terms of percent, plus 1.9%. And of them, what percentage were actually on the drugs? Well, that was the 4.95%. And notice, this would give you the exact same result. Now there's an interesting takeaway here. Because this is saying, of the people that test positive, 72% are actually on the drugs. You could think about it the other way around. Of the people who test positive, 495 plus 190, what percentage aren't on drugs? Well, that was 190, and this comes out to be approximately 28%. 100% minus 72%. And so, if we were in a court of law, and let's say the prosecuting attorney, let's say I got tested positive for drugs, and the the prosecuting attorney says, look, this, this test is very good. It only has a false positive rate of 2%. Sal, and Sal tested positive. He is probably taking drugs. A jury who doesn't really understand this well or go through the trouble that we just did might say, oh yeah, Sal probably took the drugs. But when we look at this, even if I test positive using this test, 
there's a 28% chance that I'm not taking drugs, that I was just in this false positive group. And the reason why this number is a good bit larger than this number is because when we looked at the original division between those who take drugs and don't take drugs, most don't take the illegal drugs. And so 2% of this larger group of the ones that don't take the drugs, well, this is actually a fairly large number relative to the percentage that do take the drugs and test positive. So I will leave you there. This is fascinating, not just for this particular case, but you will see analysis like this all, all the time when we're looking at whether a certain medication is effective or a certain procedure is effective. It's important to be able to do this analysis.